But I don't want to let go of my life. It's the same thing with people. I don't want to change my ways. I like the way I am. But your ways are in His ways. And God's not pleased with your ways. And if you want to have the, that beautiful freedom and the liberty of serving God, you're going to have to do some humbling. It's not about the rich man. It's about us. Because the disciples were kind of bad. You know, we've given up everything. We give up our houses. We give up our families. We've done everything. To, we give our fishing business away to follow you. Well, we're going to get reward for that. He says he's going to get a hundredfold back because they, they, they gave up their life. When I gave my life to Jesus, I was going to be a rock star. I had a band. I bought a six thousand dollar party and I was gonna get down to business and be the first rock and roll party and player in the world. And I had this big dream that I'm gonna be something, but I was messed up in drugs and alcohol and everything else. My life was in a disaster zone and I wanted to have this big goal of becoming famous and, and, and be known by mankind. I'm an entertainer. And yet I was scared to get on stage to talk to people. <laughs> I had to get drunk and stoned before I can open my mouth. And Jesus said, you want to follow me? What would you gain? I gain the whole world and lose your soul. So I gave up my, my whole career as a musician. And I gave it to God. And, and I stopped playing in dance halls. And I stopped running a discotheque. And I stopped getting young age uh, teenagers getting drunk at a disco place that we were running which I was in charge of it. <clears throat> and I gave it all up to serve God. And I'm so glad I did because He set me free. I got delivered from alcohol and drugs and everything. And I, I couldn't even have no desire to smoke or cuss and swear. So you know, you can't tell me that that didn't happen accidentally. It's because I was sick and tired of my lifestyle. I was sick and tired of me. I was a miserable man that needed to be saved. And I had to humble. My heart was hurt, wounded, and everything else. The question, how bad do you want a miracle in your life tonight. What must we do that we might be saved from ourselves? I'm not talking about when we say from ourselves, you're not supposed to remain like you are. You become a new creature. You understand? If you're still hanging around thinking you're 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 nobody and you can't be saved, you're lost. You're not even saved. And people are not getting saved just because you say they're saved. They're not saved by, by prophesying over them. They have to come to the altar. They have to make a decision. They have to humble ourselves. Just like we all have to humble before God if we want to have what God has for us in our lives. And become the church that He calls us to be. And God is going to have a witness. And he's going to have a church. And it's going to be a glorious church. But it's only going to be a church that's going to humble. That's going to pay the price. That's going to lay down their ways and go all the way with God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's an humble experience. Have some humble pie tonight. You want to have an experience of God's mercy? Are you ready to humble and ask forgiveness for your sins? What do you need for God to have mercy on you? Who is going to give you forgiveness? And how it's going to take place? It has to start in your heart. We need to humble ourselves so God can forgive us and when He forgives us, 
He removes whatever is wrong with you. And it's taken out, blotted out of existence. A new man begins to rise on the inside because you're taking on the nature, the divine nature of Christ coming alive inside you. You'll be walking like he walks because it's no longer you that lives, it's Christ that lives. And if you're not there yet, you can get there if you want to. But you've got to humble everything. Not 99%, 100%. Amen. Notice how much we must be willing to humble ourselves to God. And not going through the motions of speaking words and to put an appearance that we are being humble. There was a Pharisee that was in prayer in the temple, and he was standing before God and saying, Oh God, how good I am. I pay my tithes. I am faithful, and I go to church and never miss a day. And look how good I am, how successful and how blessed I am. Thank God I'm not like that dirty sinner in the corner that doesn't deserve to be in our church. And yet there's a the man that he was calling a dirty sinner was crying out in the corner and say, Lord, have mercy on me, for I'm a sinner. Forgive me, save me, deliver me. Who do you think God answered? Is the attitude? So what happens when your life gets right with God and God forgives you and you get set free? Now you got a big chest to be open on for the child of God, Lord of God, hallelujah. That's not what happens when you get Christ in. It's the opposite way. When Christ comes in, you become a humble servant. You become obedient. You become submissive. You begin to follow Christ and you begin to say, yes, Lord, what do you want me to do next? And you begin to surrender your doubts and your attitudes and you take on the life of Christ. And you continue to live in that place. You never think you're better than somebody else. You're always thinking what's best for someone else instead of what's best for me. You see, there's a compassion that happens and you continue to live in this presence. To continue to stay with God. How much... Are we willing to humble ourselves to get to that place? Amen. Amen. No more lip service. Amen. In humbling ourselves, there's another place talking about humbling ourselves to God, is to ask for help. Did you know you need to humble to God, which I do every Sunday, getting up six in the morning, and then this afternoon I was humbling and praying, asking God, what do you want me to speak about? So I can help you to come to Him, to get your miracle. Because I can't give you a miracle, but I know the one who does. But you know, I know I cannot do it for you. You must humble yourself to come to Him so He can perform a miracle. And God will give you a miracle. You ever know this? Why the blind man received a miracle? You ever know this? How the leper received a miracle? Because he humbled himself. When a person is an outcast, like a leper, you don't have to be a leper to be an outcast. It's not hard when you're an outcast to humble before God. It's not hard for you to humble when your back's against the wall. When the whole world is caving on top of you. But it's when you are at the bottom in your life in your circumstances. And when you're going to humble yourself to God. The biggest struggle that you're going to have with your life is 
dealing with yourself. And the reason it's so hard because you see yourself fail, you see yourself on the bottom, you have seen, you have lost everything or whatever you've gone through. And you start looking down at yourself. You don't think you're good enough. You're not worthy enough. When you start feeling not worthy, not good enough, and you start feeling I'm not worthy. And so many people when they get in this condition, they give up. Because they're trying to get out of the bottom and can't get up. And they can't get grace from God when they're crying to Him because how they feel about themselves. Because they have to humble to God and say, God forgive me because of I think I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I got, I'm a such a mess. How can you love me? How can you help me? And we are so busy condemning ourselves that we end up staying in a rut and we can't get out of it because you're the victim of your circumstance of what you suffered in life. And you're condemning yourself. It's bad enough people condemn you, but now you're condemning yourself because you don't feel worthy. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. You understand what I'm saying? But that's when you begin to humble to God and say, God, this unworthy person that I am, I, I'm humbling from this unworthy attitude and thinking of myself. Yes, I'm not worthy, but you are worthy, and you can have mercy on me, just like the blind man. The blind man says, but I can't see, and I'm sick and tired of being the laughing stock of the whole neighborhood. Oh, there comes that blind man again. He's going to walk into the telephone hole or something. <laughs> you kick him a little bit, push him around and say, <laughs> you look down at him, right? How do you think he feels about you think he's having a party? No. He was sick and tired and I don't want to be blind no more. The leper, I'm tired of being an outcast. Don't come close to me, you're a plague. You got the COVID virus. Ooh. You know, you're running around like you're scared out of your mind. Don't touch me. Gotta wash your hands. You gotta wear a mask. Never know. You're contaminated. <laughs> when you're not. Just thinking about the attitude that how that is being pressed on people's minds and hearts and they wonder what's going on. It can affect you. You can't go to the grocery store now. That's in the browser. Or you can't even go to church in Quebec. It's a fine if you do. Curfew. You gotta be off the streets after 10 o'clock till 5 in the morning. You're under martial law. Why? Why? They're lying. One more story. See, people, if they don't humble, when they feel down and out about themselves, you know what they end up doing? They commit suicide. They had an out They killed themselves. The suicidal spirit comes on them because they beat themselves up with it. And you gotta deal with that to humble to get that out of your heart and say, God, I don't want to kill myself. I just want to be set free from this. And all you have to do is give it up. Stop condemning yourself. You have a mess. Every one of us got a mess where we came out. But when we humble to God, God is not gonna condemn you, He's gonna heal you, deliver you. In Mark 10, 46, and I'm gonna end with this particular scriptures. Amen. They came to Jericho and there was a man by the name of Bartimaeus. He was blind. Timotheus. 
He's on the highway side begging. He heard about Jesus. Now he began to humble me to God and say, Christ, Jesus, the son of David, had mercy on me. Why did he do it? Because he started humbling to Jesus and asking for him to have mercy on him. I'm tired of being blind. I'm tired of what I'm living in. I don't want to be like this no more. Have mercy on me. And the more he began to yell the people, they shout out man be quiet you're, you're making a racket you're annoying everybody leave get out of here no compassion but Lord have mercy on me and he won't stop he couldn't care that's what people say that he was humbling asking for help in a desperation it didn't sound too humble, did it? But it was humbleness in the eyes of God because he wanted God to intervene supernaturally by the power of God and he was on that edge and here's my opportunity just like tonight. You can humble before God and God will hear your cry and save you. But then Jesus stopped and said, Hey, I hear someone crying. I'm hearing you. I know what you're going through. I know what you're feeling. I know what you've been through. I know you've gone through hell. You've been going through the fire like you've never experienced in your life. He stopped and said, Bring that man to me. He said, Come to me tonight. You that are watching on you, come to Jesus. He said, Well, I'm not in a church tonight. But you are right. Before the living God that is waiting for you to respond to us for help. Glory to God. As a result, he was ready to be set free. He didn't want to be identified as a blind man. He cast his, his cloth off of him because they had to wear a clothes so everybody knows he's a blind man. Today we give him a stick instead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take and throw your stick away. Amen. It means that you're ready when you're humbling to get rid of the problem and the guilt and the condemnation and the, the hurt and the wounds and the pain that's inside you. God wants to miraculously heal you. He said, come to me. And then he finally come right to him and it's like, this is what Jesus is saying to you right now. Every one of you are qualified to come to Jesus in this manner, even you that are watching on YouTube. He says, Jesus says this to you, no matter what you've been going through, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter where you are, no matter how messed up your life has been, and no matter what crisis you have faced, Jesus asks you a question. What is it that you want me to do for you? Do you realize when you begin to humble and you present all your needs before Him, all the things that you are experiencing within you, and you begin to humble and cry to God? You may not have been praying, but you should have been crying. Crying about your situation it looks so hopeless, it looks like it's never going to be resolved. You feel like you're at the end of yourself and you're just surviving from one day to the other. And you just wonder where in the world anybody if you would just humble. See, here I am, God. Take me just the way I am. With my mess. Come and heal me. Come and set me free. I need a miracle in everything in my life. I can't go on like this no more. I'm at the end of myself. I don't know if they turn to the right or to the left or go forward or go backwards. No matter which way, I'm at, I'm at the place now that have mercy on me. You see, when you begin to pray and cry and call on God to help you in your situation, Jesus is going to ask him, what do you want me to do for you? 
And that's when you say, I know what I need. If you have to write a letter and write down everything that you really need from God, then write it. And as you write every need, you say, this is what's wrong, this is what's wrong, this is what's wrong with me, this is my struggle with me, this is everything that's coming and happening right now for me, and I don't want this no more. I want you to heal me. I want you to deliver me. I want you to cleanse my heart. I want you to heal my wounded, broken heart. Do you know the first thing that the Holy Spirit does when the Spirit of the Lord came on Jesus? He came to heal the broken heart. Because your heart needs to be healed. Because if your heart doesn't get healed, how are you going to get the rest of the miracles in your life? He has to wash you. Question. Are you ready to give it all to God? Are you ready to go to the altar tonight? Are you ready to ask Jesus to set you free? Are you ready to humble tonight and say, I'm ready. I've gone as far as I can and I'm at the end of myself. And I'm ready to say, God, whatever it takes, God, tonight's my night. Even God said for me to have a miracle rally. I have now said and I told and I sent out the, the advertising for it so people might come and, and receive a miracle for their lives. But I realize a lot of people right here because they're not taking the time to pray and to seek the things of God to deal with the issues that they're struggling with. Instead of just putting up with it and living with it and say hope somehow I'll survive. God, we're not in the survival mode here. We're in the resurrection mode. We're here to set you free. We're here to tell you that God loves you. He wants to heal you and set you free. And if there isn't anything that you have done that He, that he will condemn you with, He'll forgive you. And when He takes it out of you, it's like it never existed. Like it comes to the end of your own self. You give it up. And He says, I'll give you something better. A new life. Life more abundantly. You may be a victim of your situation. But we have a great God. Amen. And if you're here tonight. And this is speaking to you. And you understand this. And you're ready to humble before Jesus. And you're ready to ask God to give you mercy. Amen. Hallelujah then I want you to open your heart to God tonight. I want you to humble sincerely and honestly and draw the line tonight. I'm not going to be in this position no more from this day on. It's going to end tonight when we come to the altar. And I'm inviting you to come to the altar so you can bring this miserable life to an end in your heart and mind. He's not forcing you. He's not mad at you. He's not condemning you. You're coming to Him tonight because you're ready to surrender and humble and say, change me and heal me. Turn my sorrow into joy. Heal my body. Just think about all those people that have been vaccinated and they're getting sick in their bodies. And it looks like they're at the end of themselves. Let me tell you, there's a God that knows what you've gone through and what's happened to your body. And I want to reassure you that if you begin to humble to God, say, God, forgive me for me taking these shots that is destroying my body. Did you know that God has the power to raise you from the dead? There is no disease, no vaccine that can stop you from coming back to life. God can heal you. Don't let the devil lie to you. God has the power to, to set you free and take out that poison out of your system. And give you a new start. And you that has been filled with fear and doubt and you're panicking over this thing. God wants to set you free from that too. I want to put some boldness inside you that you're not afraid of anything. Hallelujah. We can stand for righteousness. We want, we want to do what is right. 
Amen. And, and we, we're going to stand in the gap for our loved ones that God might save them. We're not there to condemn them because they make the wrong turns in life. But we're here to tell them that there's still hope. God is the God of grace and mercy and He will restore to you everything that the devil's stolen from you. And we've got to do it God's way. We need to save the whole world because the world's in a mess. The politicians are in a mess. The government's in a mess. The medical system's in a mess. They all realize what's going on is wrong. And they're pushing it. Because they only have their own agenda. is to manipulate. To bring people into bondage. To take away your rights. And make slaves out of you. And we have a choice. Give yourself to God and serve God and don't bow to the system of this world. God's going to make a way for you when if there is no way, God will make a way. And when we get through with this, when Jesus comes back, He's going to destroy with the brightness of His coming. And He's going to put an end to this evil, wicked world and bring judgment to it from the Almighty God where He will bring the judgment in righteousness. At the same time, he can give mercy to those that humble. Well, condemn the proud that will repent. You hear me? We're in a valley decision right now. What it shall it be? You can sit there in your chair or you can come up to the front and make a declaration. It's enough, it's enough. And put an end to this misery in your life. If you want God to take away this problem that you're facing, then come to the front. We're going to pray for each one that comes. You that are watching on YouTube, you can also come. Come just the way you are. And let God do a miracle. If you need a miracle in being healed by the grace of God, come. Now's the time to reach out to the living God. Don't sit there. Put an end to this misery in your life. Let's put the devil where he belongs. And let God step into the picture and help you and save you and set you free from the struggle you have with yourself. Hallelujah. Open your heart to God right now. Tonight's your night. Don't sit there. Don't let the devil steal the opportunity for God to give mercy and grace to you this night. Come just the way you are. Praise the Lord. Mr. Cameraman, you need to wake up back there. <laughs> James. James. You got to be in the camera to watch me. You got to follow me wherever I go. Expand the picture so you can fit in the picture when we're praying for the people. Oh, sorry. I know you know never had experience in this, but it's okay. Amen. Right, you Hallelujah. It. Just follow me. Okay. Keep your eyes on me. E. Eyes. Yeah, I got you. There we go. Make it big enough so everybody else fits in it. I don't need to be the center of the attention. No, I got you all. All right, very good. You're all good. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands. You don't have to say what you're dealing with because God already knows it. God knows exactly what you need from God because He knows what you have needed before you ask Him. Hallelujah. Father, right now, let the grace of God and the faith and the mercy of God, let the blood of Jesus sanctify and break any yoke and bondage, release it from the captivity of darkness, and set it free by the power of God. In Jesus' name, and lift him up into a new relationship and freedom that he's never known before. Hallelujah, that the old things will pass away and as you continue to grow, you begin to mature and God will begin to teach you and guide you and lead you by my spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you take out all the guilt and the memories and all the condemnation and all the things that has happened over the years that only God can wash it all away. Hallelujah, the hurts and the pains and rejection and, and all the things you 
you have suffered since you were a child. And let there be a new beginning by the Holy Ghost inside of you and a miracle to transform your life in the Holy Ghost fire where Jesus comes alive and the resurrection power that will set you free by the power of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people think you've got to fall down. No, you don't have to fall down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a husband and a wife, and they, we already know that they're going to hell. But now this is it. This is the end. No more. Get behind, Satan. Get out of the way. Everything you have done to try to destroy these lives. To the circumstances. No more. God, you deliver them. You heal them in their hearts and mind and restore to them spiritually. Come alive with the compassion and the love that they will be able to minister to others to set them free from the struggles that they have within themselves. That your power now will heal from within. The memory of those things are going to be washed away. And now God is going to open his windows of heaven and restore to you the joy of your salvation. And he's going to fight your battles and he's going to go before you. And there will be nothing that can stand against you. No weapon formed against you will not prosper. Because I am with you, said the Lord. And I have chosen you this day. I have I've taken you to the fire. I have purged you and I've cleansed you. And I'm healing you now. And setting you free. Today is a new day. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 All the old things. That hearts, the turmoils, the memories, the thoughts and imaginations because of the past. And God says, the old things shall pass away. Behold, I shall make all things new. And you're going to become a new creature. And you're going to walk in a newness of life. You have come this far. You have come into the entrance of entering into the life of Christ. And I'm going to resurrect this power inside of you. And you're going to get the understanding and the wisdom like you have never seen before. And you're going to have this freedom. And you're going to have the ability to know how to minister to people's needs who are in the same struggles that you've gone through. And you will be annoyed by my spirit to minister by the Holy Ghost fire. Hallelujah. And all these blessings are now coming upon you. And people are going to be jealous of you. People will begin to criticize you. And they keep throwing you the past into your face and the mud and accuse you because of whatever. But you just tell them I've been washed in the blood of Jesus and all things are passed away. And I, God does not remember my past and neither do I because the past does not exist no more. I am free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A new start. A new beginning. In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've been crying and crying and crying and crying. The crying is coming to an end. God has heard you cry. By the reason of the struggles. The days that gone through. And the memories and thoughts and imaginations. That just keep coming up into your mind. God is now washing those thoughts out of your mind supernaturally by the power of the Holy Ghost. He is releasing you from the captivity. And now you're going to find the liberty and the freedom. And you will no longer live in the past. Because the past is gone. God is going to wash it away. He's going to cleanse you and fill you with a new life. In the Holy Ghost and the Word that's been planted into your heart over the years. In the Holy Ghost, and you're going to be free. Hallelujah! You're going to be free. You're going to have compassion like you never have, 
And you're going to be able to minister with such wisdom that you've never known before and lead people into the kingdom of God as you have come to me today. As you have humbled before me, I shall lift you up. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And fill you with the new life in Christ. Let it go. That's all the pain coming up. There it goes. All the pain and hurt and wounds. Deep right from the childhood. All those things are coming out. Be free. Be free. By the power of the living God. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Una Messiah. The King of the Messiah. Holy Jesus, hallelujah. Hold on, Messiah. Hallelujah. Holy Jesus. All your life you've been beat up by people, by words and actions. You've been put down and condemned by people. People that continually still look down at you and they'll say, well, you'll never amount to anything. And they're continually condemning and you've been hard on yourself. You think you're not worthy, you're not good enough to serve God. But I tell you, you are a chosen vessel that is humble under the mighty hand of God. And my anointing is going to break the yokes and bondage, And you're going to be set free by my spirit and by my power. I'm going to give you a new start in the Holy Ghost and Fire. I'm giving you a birth to a new life inside. And your old life is going to be washed out. And it's going to be like a miracle. You will not desire the things you used to desire. I take it out of you. I'm giving you a new beginning in the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And your conscience, your mind, your thoughts are going to be washed clean. And the iniquity and the memory and the condemnation and guilt of all the sins as you participate is going to be washed away. They do not exist no more. My blood is breaking the yoke. You've been set free by my power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hold the Shabbat Messiah. Fill him with the holy fire. Fill him with the holy fire. Fat the plain. Purge him and grow in the grace of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Come on, sister, this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, don't be afraid to come up here because this is your night. You, you know, no, don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Oh, you're not afraid. I know that. Hallelujah. Now, God, let the fire and the intercessory prayer and the power of God to come into her heart and life and take her into a high level of the Spirit. And you're going to see in the Spirit. You're going to pray in the Spirit. You're going to know exactly what to do in your situations. Hallelujah. God's going to lead and guide you by my Spirit. And you're going to have a, such a discernment. You will see things. You will even know people. What's wrong with them that come into church? And you will go and be anointed to pray for them till they're healed and set free by the compassion of the love of God. In Jesus' name, you're like a mother in the church looking after the children to bring comfort and assurance to those who are in the body. He's just telling you, just trust me. I'm leading you. I'm with you and I never leave you. And I will supply every need in your life. You don't need to worry. I am with you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Well, that's a confirmation. Yes, great grandma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's like a mother to me. Hallelujah. Yeah, she has to be the mother there. My mother's not here no more, but she's my other mother. Amen. That's right, but now God is dealing with you. God to deal with you. You gotta surrender what's in here. Because you see it, it's affecting you. And it's distracting you. 
from surrendering to God. And God wants to change you from within. Because when you see, as I see, you see your tenants differently. You see them where they're at to how to bring them out of there. But you can't do it in your strength. You got to realize you got to do it in my strength. And you can only do that as you humble your life and ask God for mercy to heal you and to set you free from where you're coming from. The life that you lived in and that still tries to hurt you, that tempts you, that plays with your mind, that wants to bring the past into into reality of an everyday living and is constantly running after these demons of hell that are trying to take you captive to your weaknesses of your flesh and the weakness of your mind and motion because there's a lot of deep, deep, deep hurt inside and you have been covered it up by showing that you're Mr. Top Guy and nobody matters with me and that's the tough guy that needs to come down today which is not really Christ it's your your old pain that you're carrying and to tie your life and God is going to break that yoke when you humble and give it up lay it down you don't need it he gives you something better than that he gives you a new life he's going to set you free now break your yoke in Jesus name and now fill him with the holy fire. Hey God, let this fire ignite inside of him. That's going to affect his mind and thought, his behavior, in how he's going to think and talk, and how he's going to come down. And he's going to have a peace about him like he never had. And he's not going to be frustrated, not going to be upset. He's going to be sanctified by the blood of Jesus and by the power of God. And be filled with the desire to serve God. Hallelujah. 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 He comes. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I know some of you probably think I'm gone crazy tonight, but I'm really not crazy at all. Hallelujah. Just the Holy Spirit is speaking out of me. Hallelujah. I know the sister here. I know you, you come here. Just come on. I know you're a little afraid, you know, yeah, you come here. I know you're not used to this, and it's loose. It's kind of frightening in one sense, right? Because you've never seen anything like this. But let me tell you something. God wants to heal you. All you have to do is open your heart. He's not going to force himself on you. You have things that you need to give to God tonight. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to tell anybody what they are. God knows, and you know. And all you have to do is say, Lord, help me. Can you say that? Can you say, help me, Jesus? He needs to watch you tonight. Just ask him, Jesus, I have so many things in my life and I'm hard on myself. You're very hard on yourself. You beat yourself up because of things that's happened in your life. You're constantly blaming yourself the things that you suffered in the past. And you have a hard time thinking that anybody could love me or anybody can give me hope. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus loves you. He's the one that can heal you. He's the one that's going to come into your heart and give you a new heart and a new mind. He's going to open your eyes to a really big God, not a imaginary one. He's going to give you birth to the love that you always needed. And when that love begins to heal within your heart, it's going to affect everything you see. You're going to see things like it's like a new day for you. And then a new day when it comes alive inside you, it's Christ that's coming in you. It's Jesus. It's His love that's coming inside you. And He's not condemning you. He's not putting you down. He's been waiting for you to come to Him. He's been preparing your heart to come to Him. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, here I am. Take me just the way I am. And come into my heart and help me from this day forward. And when you've asked that, God is going to restore to you everything. 
God's going to turn your sorrow into joy. And God is going to cause the blessing of God's love come alive in you. And you're going to see people differently. Because you know how it feels to be down and out. And you have a compassion for people that are down and out. You just have a compassion for them. It's because it's in you. It's because God put that inside you. Now he wants that compassion come out of you to bring him to Christ. To the same Jesus that's coming inside you. And you understand the days ahead. So are you willing to open your heart and ask Jesus to come in your heart? Right now. Will you willing? That's all I'm asking. You will. Nobody's forcing. Do you want Jesus to just touch you? I won't even touch you, okay? You can just make a decision. Say, Jesus. Just say after me. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Come on, just say, Jesus have mercy. Can you say that? Just say, Jesus have mercy. And say, help me. Just say, help me. Just in your thoughts, help me. I know you're, you're not used to this, but just say, help me and help me and save me and heal me. That's all he's asking you to ask me. Because he already knows what you need. And everything's going to work out. Just be patient. Okay? Let him do his work in you. And we're going to give you a Bible so you can start reading it. And, and you're, going to, you're going to learn how much God loves you. And we encourage you to come to church. The more you come, the more fun it gets. Amen? All right? God just wanted you to know that. You're in His hands already. Amen. He just washed all the past away. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And all you people that are watching on you, or oh, you want prayer, go to God. All I want is freedom. All right, that's all you need, right? God, He needs the freedom and the liberty and the freedom that is in Christ, that is in the Holy Spirit, that's in the love of God, a freedom that will heal His mind, heal His thoughts. And now, God, that you'll be able to see, comprehend, and understand, and you can transform His whole life tonight by the grace of God. And create a new heart and, and total freedom, no longer struggle with himself. You, from this day on, your eyes are going to open, your mind's going to open, your life is going to open. You're going to discover that you can do anything now because God has given you grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And you're not a failure. Did you hear me? So stop beating yourself up with it. You're a child of God. You belong to Jesus. And he's in you. And with you. All the time. You can talk to him. Anytime. Anywhere. He'll never leave you. In Jesus name. Amen. Awesome. Well I know this is one of those services that. You'll never be the same. I don't need to tell you this to Greg, but you're at the crossroads now. And the crossroads means that one more step in surrendering your life to God that's going to transform your life. And everything that you've been going through and the things you're looking at are going to change because you're going to see what God's going to do with you in your life and those around you and you're going to be set free from the past and the turmoil you have gone through the fire. Nobody will let them understand even if you explain to them. But God says, I have my hand on you ever since I, you gave your life to me and I have never left you. My spirit's been working in you though you may not be able to explain what you know and what you have. 
but I have been there the whole time with you and I'm healing you from inside which no man can do but my spirit and as you yield to it and you know how to open your heart to the Holy Spirit and I have been preparing your heart to come into my life in a new way a breakthrough that's going to change everything and it's going to change overnight overnight everything that the devil intended for evil I'm going to change it for my glory now and I'm going to bless you Amen Amen Praise God well, I'm glad you all came. You that are watching on YouTube, if you pray, say God, God will respond to you. God waits on you to decide to humble. And continue to humble and pray and seek His face and God will lift you up. Amen. Hallelujah. He's got, his, he's got a hold of you whether you know it or not. Amen. Praise God. God bless you and have a happy new year. Go to God. Glory to God. And of course we take up the offering. I always forget about stuff like that. Lately I'm just not paying attention to it. But praise God. God is still moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Lord to God. Isn't God good? Anybody else have anything to give? Down there? No. Oh. Yeah. I thought she said no. No, no, we'll take them here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Everything works. The blessings of God. Amen. It's a good way to start the new year. And you that are listening on the, on, the, on the YouTube, you can also make a choice in humbling and praying to God that He will bring a word to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we lift up today's offering and release the blessing upon each one of us. And lead us and guide us in everything we say and do and let everything become new. And cause this church to rise to its potential and calling. But that you're going to have the people that's going to take their positions in the spirit. So we can bring in the harvest of souls that are crying out in the city that they might be saved. And God, release your confidence and your faith and blessing upon your people and baptize with the love of God every morning as they begin the day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. I guess I've preached too long because my voice is almost gone. 